Can ETFs protect against a drop in the markets? August has been a volatile month for stocks. A large cohort of older investors has created a demand for products that allow investors to still stay invested but provide some protection on the downside. Now, how does this exactly work? Let's talk with Bruce Bond. He's the CEO of Innovator ETFs. Also joining us, Mark Hagan, Senior Vice President at Index Fund Advisors and author of the book, Investing in U.S. Financial History, Understanding the Past to Forecast the Future. Bruce, uh, these buffered ETFs are supposed to provide partial downside protection while still staying in the markets. Uh, there's a new one every month. Uh, I want you to explain how they work, but what kind of buffer, for example, does the August power buffer provide? Explain what we're protecting here and what the buffer's like. Yeah, happy to do it, Bob. So the August power buffer gave you 15% prote protection on the downside. So from zero to negative 15% over a year, and you get 12.8% of the upside over that same period. So if someone wants to invest in the S&P 500, they can get right in and do that. They have 15% protection on the downside, and they have 12.8% opportunity on the upside. So for August, I want to just repeat this because it's a, it's a little hard to figure out. The, the maximum upside, if you bought August 1st with this uh, the August buffer, the maximum upside you get next year is 12.8% on the S&P 500. Above that, you don't get any more. Mm -hmm. And you're protected right. up to a drop of 15% in the S&P 500. If it drops more than that, you can still, if it drops 16%, you, you, you're still liable for that extra 1%, right? That, that's how right, this works right. so, for this one. Yeah, if it went down 20, you would lose 5%. But right. that is the buffer, the 15%. So right. it's, it's, uh, you know, it's a level of protection. That's the reason we call it a buffer instead of just protection. Right. You know, it, it protects right. you for a certain amount right. of downside in the market. Um, right. Usually so, within so there's the one for the start. I, I, I just want to get through this. There's, the start, there's one for the start of every month. Uh, so the August buffer ETF is meant to be held for a year, but it's an ETF, so you can buy any time, but the prices may change. And, and what happens at the end of the year? Like if I buy August 1, the August, uh, what happens at the end yeah. of, the, of, of the year? At the end of the year, the reason we tell you to wait an end of the year because there are one-year options within the portfolio. So at the end of the year, the options are fully valued, and then we reset it for a following year. So next august they would fully value it then we would reset it for another year you would get another 15 percent downside buffer so you couldn't lose for the first 15 percent and then you'll get a cap now the level of your cap depends on where the market's at at, the, at that time so the cap you know historically over the last couple of years has been higher than where we are today at 12.8 percent but it could so it could be higher it could be a little bit lower but it all depends on the amount of volatility dividend yields and those yeah. types of things uh, in the marketplace. Right. So for, for those who want a little more detail, th this involves buying and selling options. There's actually four that you're buying and selling. You're, you're holding an S&P right. 500 option for the target month. Uh, then you're executing right. a, a put strategy. You're, you're buying a put option with a higher strike price. You're selling a, a put option with a lower strike price. Um, then you're selling an upside call option to finance the downside protection. This is a lot of options activity. Uh, I, I just want to make it, some people are actually interested in how this works. So, so, so these are the, are the details uh, on it. So yeah. there's essentially four executions here, that you're, that you're, four options executions here, right? Yep, that's exactly okay. right, Bob. I and mean, we, we buy one option, gives you a participation in the market, and then there's a put spread, that's a 15%. And then we sell a call at, on the upside at the level we have to to raise some additional money to pay for the put spread. That's how the package gets to go right. put together. It's basically a zero sum package, right? It pays for itself. And then somebody can just invest in that. We do it at the institutional level. So it'd be very difficult for a retail okay. investor to ever duplicate the cost of it that we do it at. Okay, Mark, I, I want to bring you in here. Um, your book, uh, Investing in U.S financial history. Uh, it, it's a fascinating book, uh, a very comprehensive look at U.S. financial uh, history, including uh, active management. Um, what do you think of this? What, what, what do you think just generic of strategies that allow investors to... Uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> I mean, my concern ability. with... The, my question would be the use case. I, I mean, I'll take it at, at your word that, that it actually works. It is pretty complex. But there... It seems to be hedging volatility 
in my guess is an expensive way. And this is gonna sound kind of simple, but it, it's true that one of the big problems with investors, particularly long-term investors, is they get spooked in the short term and a cheaper way to hedge against getting spooked in the short term is just not look at your portfolio. There's a great quote from uh, Richard Thaler, who's a, a behavioral finance expert. He said, the more often an investor counts his money or looks at the value of their mutual funds in the newspaper, this is an old quote, the lower their risk tolerance. And my concern with a solution like this, and again, I don't know all the use cases here, but my concern would be a lot of investors are creating a very expensive solution for what is ultimately a simple problem, which is they need to be more comfortable with the normal volatility of markets. And you know, speaking of financial history, that's that's a way that financial history can develop, can give you that confidence in in disruptive markets. When you've seen enough of these repetitions, you kind of know you don't know what's going to happen, but you know you know it will resolve itself. And if you're a long-term investor, vol short-term volatility really. That uh, shouldn't be concerned. Sometimes it can be helpful in terms of rebalancing. So it's really the use case. And my, my yeah. guess would be there are people using these types of funds that could could find a, a, a cheaper solution to, to deal with that volatility. You know, Bruce, Mark, Mark's bringing up a, a point about the cost of the options. Options are expensive. The fee for the CTF is almost 80 basis points a year, 0.8% a year. Um, what do you say to that? Is it, his point here is that an, there may be a cheaper option uh, out there to do either nothing or even rebalance uh, and lower your exposure a bit. You know what, I, I think uh, for somebody that researches the markets, I think that tends to make sense. But for people that are actually putting their money at risk, it doesn't make any sense. If what Mark said is true, we should all go out and just buy NVIDIA today because we believe it's going to do well in the long run, or even the S&P, or even the NASDAQ, or even, and you know what, uh, I think, you know, uh, 95, well, almost, almost $100 billion was sold in annuities last year. Now, why does that happen? The reason that happens is because people are fearful of losing their money. 75% of the assets uh, that are investable today are in people's hands, 55 plus. They do not have time or, uh, or want, or, and they're just not willing to have their money go, you know, uh, you know, drop by 20, 30% and then hope it comes back in time and they might have to get another job type of things. When you actually put your money on the line and it's not just theoretical, it's very difficult to do. And so a lot of people, they like having some knowledge of the potential outcome long-term so that they know, okay, I can put my money in. I mean, look how much money is in, you know, six, seven trillion dollars in money markets today. As people just, you know, they're just fearful of the market. And most people do not want to take on the full brunt of the market. And, and the fact is bonds, uh, haven't saved you. They haven't protected you. And by sticking your head in the sand and just saying, well, I'm just going to pretend it, yeah. you know, I'm going to be okay. People just are not comfortable with that most yeah. of the time with yeah. real money. They just, you know, I've seen right. it. You know, I believe me, I've had hundreds of equity products, hundreds of fixed income products. And I can just tell you, this fits a, 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 a group of people that are interested yeah. in, in getting exposure to the market but not taking the full risk of the market. Okay, uh, Mark, uh, what do you say to that? I mean, he, there is a point to yeah. this. I mean, annuities, annuities actually are a form of downside protection. People do give up potential upside yeah. in having other things out there uh, in exchange for uh, a, a stream of income. So there is evidence people are, annuities is an evidence that people are exactly concerned about that. So yeah, yeah I mean, honestly, I think that this is, the, this is the job of a financial advisor and it's funny, the reason I wrote this book was when COVID hit, I admittedly was kind of caught flat footed. I'd never seen anything like this before. And but the more I started reading about financial history, the more I realized that nothing over the last four years was unprecedented. And I think the role of a financial, you know, a financial advisor who is providing value is to calm people during times like this. And, you know, just over the past week, that's what what I've been doing is it. it it seemed like it was a flash crash last week, which is not unprecedented. 
Um, it was actually a pretty plain, plain vanilla and, and benign one as far as flash crashes go. And I just, I, I think financial advisors that are doing their job can provide the calm at, at or, or the, you know, the calming advice at, at a lower cost than products like these. And, you know, that's yeah. not a, a judgment about whether these products work or not. I just, you know, I, I think there are cheaper solutions out there. Yeah. Bruce, uh, I, I want to move on here. You have other buffered products uh, that offer even yeah. more protection, 100% downside protection uh, that are also yes. monthly. Um, let's take the case of, of one of them, the equity defined protection ETF for August. The symbol is ZAUG, Z as in zebra, AUG. Uh, tell us how this works. Well, I mean, these are very similar to people that buy like a CD, a bank CD or a, a market link CD. Basically, what you can do is you can buy Zog and hold it for 12 months. And over that 12 months, as long as you bought it you know, right up front, you're not going to lose money. But you have access to a certain amount of the upside in the market. That upside in the market, uh, you know, is around nine percent, and so you get the upside of what's available in the market that the options market, kind of the vol market, they call it, will give to you, which you have no risk of loss. And so, people that currently are are in a money market and rates look like you know they will probably go down in a money market. And remember, a money market, you have to pay tax on money market. So even if it's at five percent, you're going to get dropped a little bit, you know, after taxes. Here you have the potential to get 8.8% over the year, no risk of loss. And, and the other thing that's important here is that you're, 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 you have a safe asset that's in equities rather than fixed income. And so you're getting the potential upside that's available for equities up to a cap with no risk of market loss. There are, um, you know, as we mentioned a, a bit ago, you know, billions and billions and billions of dollars that are put into these types of protective strategies because people don't want to take on the full risk of the market. And uh, that's why these, and, and I think what we've done is we've looked at those and we've said, okay, a market link CD, very expensive, structured products, very expensive, annuities, very expensive. These take what they do, put them in an ETF, they give you transparency, they give you liquidity, to give you um, no counterparty risk like these other products have. And they're completely liquid. You can buy and sell yeah. them at any time. So they've improved significantly these other products in the yeah. market that you know billions yeah. of dollars are being put into. Well, I have to say that it, in terms of annuities, we, we uh, 30 years ago at CNBC, there was a whole discussion about annuities and, and they were very po popular, but they, generally were products that were sold and not bought. So you, it was 5% mm -hmm. commission was very typical. Uh, and 80 basis points against a 5% commission is certainly a better deal. I, you know, and I would certainly mm -hmm. grant you that. And in an ETF wrapper, which is more transparent, uh, is also, these are definitely improvements. <laughs> these products are definitely improvements over just simply you know, buying an annuity and giving away 5%. Quite yeah, or a structured a product or, you or, know, yeah, they're also any of these expensive. other type of products, you know, very yeah. expensive. And so to get this type of an outcome for people to control their exposure, there's nothing like that available in the market today. Right. And yeah. uh, so this is where they need to come for that type of uh, protection.